Hello, my name is Jeff Meyer. I'm with Industrial Soda Mechanics. Today we're here with Dr. Alexei Peskovsky, our Chief Science Officer and President. At Industrial Soda Mechanics, we get a lot of different questions uh, almost every day about nano emulsions. And many times, customers and potential customers use lots of different verbiage during those questions. Today, we're going to ask Dr. Pachkowski to give us a little bit of enlightenment on definitions, definitions like liposomes, the difference between liposomes and nano emulsions, or nano emulsions and liposomal nano emulsions. You can see how this can continue to be confusing for people. So we're going to ask Dr. Pachkowski to go through those uh, questions and provide us some answers. Thanks for this question. It's a very common question. Roughly speaking, uh, water compatible formulations that contain oils fall into one of the four uh, main categories. The first category is macroemulsions. They're typically made by either stirring or something like a rotostator homogenizer, and they involve a surfactant. Typically, they involve a carrier oil and a bioactive that is lipophilic, uh, meaning it likes oil, it will dissolve in oil. Uh, you would take your oil, your lipophilic bioactive, combine them, uh, apply some surfactant, and stir it, uh, or use a rotostator homogenizer, into water, uh, where you will get a milky emulsion with droplets in the micron range. They could be as large as several tens of microns. Uh, rotostator homogenizers typically get you down to about two microns, maybe one micron. Sometimes, depending on the formulation, you might get to less than one micron. But these formulations tend not to be stable. So for most intents and purposes, they're not appropriate to make high quality finished products from. The next category used to be very common, and it's progressively less and less common, and I'll explain why. And that is micellar suspension microemulsion, or self-emulsified system. These are different names for basically the same thing. That is typically uh, made by using a lot of surfactant. We're talking five to 10 times more surfactant than the amount of oil that you have in the formulation. You would also typically use some carrier oil, your lipophilic bioactive, and then you simply need to stir these components, not even very vigorously, to form a suspension of very small droplets, typically in a low nanometer range, around 30, 40 nanometers, sometimes even less than that. And that would be formed spontaneously. So the amount of mechanical energy you would be putting into it is very small. It's not really responsible for making the droplets smaller. They, they do this on their own. And they're able to do that because you loaded the water with so much surfactant that the properties of water are now different. It can now solubilize the oil. From the stability perspective and from the droplet size perspective, this is a good formulation. And that's because the droplets are very small and these formulations are thermodynamically stable. The problem is that there's typically so much surfactant that you, first of all, can easily be outside of compliance. Second of all, these surfactants also tend to be harsh and synthetic uh, and very harsh tasting. So uh, besides the fact that your extract is probably already bitter, there's going to be a lot of contribution from very strong tasting chemicals, which are surfactants. This used to be a very typical way that the pharmaceutical companies uh, created water compatible formulations of bioactive oils. but because of its harshness and difficulty with compliance, this type of formulation is very quickly uh, going away and is being replaced by nanoemulsions, which uh, we'll get to it in, in a minute. By the way, the name microemulsions is an unfortunate misnomer, if you will. It seems to suggest that the droplets are micron-sized, but they're not. They're actually in the range of 20, 30 nanometers. One other thing to say about microemulsions or micellar suspensions is that they tend to be very dependent on their environment in terms of their stability, which can get compromised by 
things like changes in pH, changes in temperature, dilution, things like that, which is obviously a disadvantage. Uh, liposomes are a very interesting type of formulation. They are used throughout the pharmaceutical industry, but they're very frequently misunderstood or the name is misused. I've heard things like liposomal nanoemulsions, which is a contradiction in terms, really. So liposomes are not designed for creating oil in water formulations. Liposomes have water on the interior. And then they have a, a relatively thin lipid bilayer, which can incorporate lipophilic or oil compatible uh, bioactives. And then they have water on the outside. So most of the interior is water. The, the membrane layer is lipophilic and the outside again is water. The only place where an oil compatible lipophilic bioactive can go is in this membrane layer. So the loading factor for that is not going to be very high. They're typically used for formulating water-soluble substances that are too aggressive, that get absorbed too aggressively or too quickly. For example, chemotherapy agents. If you put a, a water-compatible, water-soluble chemotherapy chemical inside a liposome and inject the suspension of liposomes into the bloodstream, you can then also incorporate special molecules, typically proteins, into the membrane of this liposome that will recognize a particular organ and accumulate in that organ. Therefore, you will be able to deliver the aggressive chemotherapy or something similar to that, to that organ where they will slowly come out of the interior of the liposome through the lipid bilayer into the organ and do what they're supposed to do. If you just injected this chemotherapy agent into the bloodstream, it would go everywhere and be very, very aggressive. This way you can have targeted delivery and you can also slow it down and set up controlled release for it. Liposomes are also used for much more simple things. Uh, for example, vitamin C. Vitamin C tends to absorb very quickly, but if you put it inside liposomes and administer it orally, digestively, uh, it will slow it down a bit, and so you won't have the, the vitamin C spike, which is not good for, for a number of reasons. So the bottom line is liposomes are very interesting, very useful, but they're not exactly appropriate for formulating bioactive oils in the water-compatible form. And the last, and we believe the best way of formulating a biocompatible oils into a water-compatible form is nanoemulsions. Nanoemulsions are in many ways similar to microemulsions, specifically in terms of their droplet size, which also tends to be on the order of 20, 30, 40 nanometers or so. And in terms of their stability, their stability is kinetic. It's a different mechanism, not thermodynamic like microemulsions. However, it's permanent. And interestingly, it's a lot less dependent on the environment they're in. Typically, you can change the pH, you can change the temperature in a, in a wide range. You can dilute them, you can mix them with each other, and their stability is not compromised. Uh, and very importantly, they're made with a lot less uh, surfactant. Typically, the amount of surfactant used in nanoemulsions is lower than the total amount of oil uh, that you would be formulating with these surfactants. And it's possible to do that because, as always, there's a catch. The catch is you need equipment. Ultrasonic equipment, for, uh, such as this ISP3000 ultrasonic liquid processor behind me, creates extremely high shear forces with ultrasonic cavitation, which break up the droplets of oil in this nanoemulsion as it's being processed into smaller droplets, and it continues doing so until the droplets get down into appropriate range, 22. 30 nanometers or so. And the function of the surfactant in this case is to maintain them stable. So the process is driven forward, not with the chemical energy created by using a lot of surfactant, access of surfactant, but rather it's, it's done with the mechanical energy supplied by the, the ultrasonic process. Once the ultrasonic system is turned off and the nanomulsion is collected, that entity that was used to drive the process forward is not present in the finished product, unlike with microemulsions, 
where the driving force for the process was this excessive amount of surfactants, which after the process is finished are still in your finished product. So while nanoemulsions have all the same benefits uh, that microemulsions have, specifically extremely small droplet sizes, which are then responsible for permanent stability, a uh, high degree of translucency in its concentrated form, and once you dilute it into a beverage, uh, transparency. And more importantly, very uh, quick onset times uh, for the bioactives and very high bioavailability profiles. They don't have the drawbacks, which is extreme amounts of surfactant. Uh, which is why we believe that nanomolgens are uh, uh, preferred formulations. Uh, and this belief is supported by the pharmaceutical companies, which are very quickly moving away from microemulsions and uh, into the nanoemulsification processes for most of their bioactives. So glad you were able to join us. Uh, we'll be having other Q&A videos available for you. Please go to sonamechanics.com for any future information.